everybody, it's Jordan with pdq.com. Uh, today we're gonna kinda go over how to remove Firefox when it's installed on a per user basis. Uh, normally, when you install it or you install it yourself, it's gonna go and do a machine level install, which means you can uninstall machine level as well. But if they go and download the file and run it, they don't have permissions to install it. It's actually just going to put it in their app data where they do have permissions, which means they have a browser that you don't really have control on. So it's probably best first on how do we find those and second on how do we like, remove those. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go to PDQ inventory and gonna build a scanner that will find that for us. Apparently I already have that open because I'm Johnny on the spot. We're gonna name this Firefox per user. And then we're gonna point to a script here, put it on the desktop because that's where all my stuff goes. Uh, per user Firefox. And then we're gonna save that one, but basically what we're gonna do first is, uh, we'll go through, we'll look through the script, what it does. So Firefox. So that scanner's built, we can run it. We don't have any per user installs because, you know, I can just run this and remove it and we get rid of it right away. But if we go look at PowerShell, uh, PowerShell we have here, we're looking for the name Firefox and we're looking in the current user uh, uninstall string where we can find it. And then from there, we're going to return items of the display name and the uninstall string. So this is gonna go out to every machine. It's going to look at the current user. So they have to be logged on for this one. And it's gonna let you know if anything is currently logged on. Uh, so I actually didn't do that with my scanner. So we're gonna go right back and uh, make an edit. And here where it says scan user, we're gonna change this to logged on user. This way, so this is only gonna work if someone is logged on. If not, it's not gonna pull back the results you're hoping, but it is a way to, if you run this only against machines that has someone logged on to it, it's gonna let you know if they have this installed, which is useful, but we can't just run the removal and have it be gone because it's not gonna look in the right spot. So the next part we're gonna do, and we're gonna use other PowerShell for this one, uh, we're gonna do removal. And this is actually just quick three lines. We're gonna look at the local app data and Firefox uninstall, and then the uninstall is helper.exe. That's just from a trial and error, not because I knew that off the top of my head. The silent parameters is dash ms, and then we're going to start the process, the uninstall string with those arguments, and that will silently uninstall the per user install. We can't just deploy this out though, because once again, we have to run this against the user that is currently logged on. So we're gonna go to deploy, a new package here, and we're looking for a PowerShell step because I wrote this in PowerShell. And we just get insert that script that we had there, the uninstall Firefox per user. And once again, on the properties, uh, conditions, not, not condition, well, condition you want logged on state, but then options run as logged on user. And so with this package, you can, based on who is in that collection, who hasn't installed, you can run this package. It's gonna go out and it's gonna ins uninstall the per user only. So if you have the global one, the ones where you can have the control you're looking for, it won't touch those, it's only gonna touch the per user. Uh, there is a way to remove for all users, but it's not something we really uh, mess around with or, or recommend. But in the package library, we have uninstall Firefox per user. And if you go in there, it is a beast of PowerShell that goes in there and is gonna load the current user of that registry, do the search, remove it, unload it and load the next one. So it's gonna go through every current user on that machine and uninstall if you find it. It does work, we've tested it, but we can't really vouch for, I mean, loading and unloading non-active sessions, you, you're asking for something to break. It's one of those run at your own risk. Might be wise just to wait for them to be logged on and then run this against them. Uh, with that, hopefully you can get back control of the uh, browser situation with your environment. You can only have the ones you approve and no uh, user only logged on versions. Uh, for pdp.com, I'm Jordan.